gym owners going for these other advanced certifications, but most people lack the knowledge on how do you help shape and change somebody's habits. That's where 95% of the success is going to be with you. Welcome to Gym Owner Freedom. I am Scott Carpenter, and I am a former broke, struggling, frustrated, and overworked gym owner that felt stuck no matter what I did to try and improve the business. Once I realized that the answer wasn't what I thought it was, just getting more clients, and after really doing the math on acquisition and churn rates, I realized I wasn't even playing a winnable game to begin with. With my current price structure, mathematically, there was no way I could afford to pay my staff so I could scale up and out of the business that I could have the time, the money, the impact, and the freedom that I always knew I was capable of. Once I learned how to add value by selling transformational programs to people who needed more than just workouts, everything changed in my life. Today, I own six gyms that all run without me, and I am free to pursue my passion projects and work just because I love to, not because I have to. And if that's a goal that we mutually share together, then this is the show for you. I'm gonna teach you the framework to make way more money with less clients and open up a world of possibilities to you. Subscribe, leave a review, and tune in every week. It'll change your life, I promise you that. All right, here we go, guys. Uh, I have two very special guests on today's show. We've got Scott Schutte, who's um, also a personal trainer as well. And I think you own your own location, correct? I do, just uh, past 13 years in March. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I thought so. We just met once before. Um, He's also co-founder of the Healthy Behavior Institute, um, which is an educational platform for teaching fitness professionals how to integrate behavior science for greater impact and higher income. And this aligns very well with what we teach. Um, It's just they go so much in depth on the science behind it and getting better to get higher compliance with your people. So I'm really excited to have uh, you on, Scott, and also Dr. Janine Steister who is a PhD, she's a behaviorist, um, college professor, researcher, and executive coach. Um, So a lot of things going on, a lot of of brain power between you two. Um, Janine and Scott, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having us on. Thank you very much. Absolutely. So yeah, um, you guys have a certification with Healthy Behavior Institute. You guys have a certification that really goes in depth on kind of what we do on the fulfillment side for our, what we teach our business model for, for gym owners. Um, you know, and, and it's great because you guys have just so much experience in this, but as you know, we, we teach gym owners how to go beyond just giving workouts and counting reps, right? They need so much more and yes, nutrition coaching is a part of that, but the greater thing behind that is it's mindset and habits. And, and it's what we call like a mentorship, taking somebody by the hand and teaching them how to how to change their lives and lead a different life and change these habits over time to become somebody new. And these gym owners can just just skyrocket their business by following our systems for that and with acquisitions. And then there's the fulfillment. And this is where like we love kind of introducing our people to specialists like you who really help up the game in learning how to how to work with these clients for greater compliance. So thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us on. And yeah, we we met at a Tim Lyons conference and got to talk about your program, love what you guys are doing and, and teaching coaches how to implement and sell this. And and yeah, we call it, um, our, our certification is 360 Wellness Coaching. But it's basically what you're saying. Uh, we're, we're being someone's fitness guide. Like a lot of people are coming in and are like, okay, I want to lose weight. So show me a workout. But as what they're seeing and what we're seeing as coaches too, is that's not enough. Mm-hmm. And what's what's was interesting about how Dr. J and I came together is basically I, I kind of divide my my career into the the first ten years was I was just into the nutrition science into the exercise and I was learning from anybody and everybody I was taking all the certifications I was shadowing people I was talking to people on Skype I was trying to be the best personal trainer I could be and I was getting good results with some people but I wanted I kept on wanting to figure out how do I how do I reach these other people, the people that aren't super motivated. And Dr. J came on as a client of mine and we started having conversations and figuring out she was a behaviorist. And we started talking about certain clients and like why they're not listening and some of the techniques I was using. And she's like, well, here's why it's not working. And so even though on paper, 
what I was doing was sound. Like, this is how you lose weight. This is how you get stronger. This is how you put on muscle. On paper, that was correct. But the problem is, if you don't take the individual person to account, it's not a great plan. And that's what she taught me all that. And that's what we put that together so we could teach coaches of how to implement that. Yeah, it was interesting to me, too, in talking with Scott, of figuring out the wealth of information that, you know, trainers like and gym owners like Scott were going after in this exercise nutrition. But I was like, you work with people. So if if you don't have any understanding of the psychology or the behavior science behind it, as, and to me, any field that works with people, you just have to have some core knowledge. And I was, I kept, when I was talking to him and I was kept thinking about it, I was like, oh my gosh, this would make you guys' jobs so much more reinforcing because you would see change. The clients would get more excited so that there's more retention. And there's just this um, a, ability all the way around to, to, to make this easier and better because there's all these amazing strategies and techniques in the exercise science and the nutrition, but it's how you apply it. And then there's always that fear too of like, we talk about individualized, like, right, meet your client where they are. And people are like, oh my gosh, there's so many different types of people. How am I going to individualize everything? Mm -hmm. But behavior science, you know, it's, it's been around a hot minute. You know, we have decades and decades of a lot of research in it. And there's some basic techniques and ways to think about it that I was just like, this isn't that you don't have to get an advanced degree or a degree in psychology or anything to learn this. And so that's why we mm -hmm. kind of got together and said, we could put this together in a way that um, coaches and, and other health professionals that really want to learn this could have this certification, get their CDs and all this good stuff and be able to implement this right away. And so that was pretty exciting for us to, to start working together on that kind of missing link. In, in my opinion, this is some of the most valuable stuff that anybody can ever learn. And it sometimes it kills me when I see personal trainers or gym owners going for these other advanced certifications that are very technical, right? Very technical on, on the fitness floor and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, those things can help over time, but most people lack the knowledge on like, yeah, how do you help shape and change somebody's habits? That's where like 95% of the, the success is going to be with you. It's, it's that. And there's really nothing, there's not much out there that's like in the normal protocol. Absolutely. And, you know, another one is sales and business. Yeah. It's like you don't learn how to do that, but that is such a meta skill, you know, and instead they're just learning just these advanced things on little, you know, physiology and this, this is like you, you don't need, you actually don't even need that for the vast majority of us. And I was in that boat too. Like I was taking functional med courses and learning blood work yeah. and all these different things. And like, it's, it's interesting stuff, but like, I, you know, I have a doctor I send people to, to do that stuff. Like I don't need to be getting into that. And, and, and here's the thing that most trainers don't want to hear. Uh, the majority of our clients, if they would just do the things that they knew that they needed to do, they would get significantly better. So if we can just help them implement those things that they already know, like most of them know they shouldn't drink every night. Most of them know they need to have more water, get more sleep, move more. Don't get me wrong. There's some that come in that need our education, but like if we can help them just implement the things that they already knew, they would get good results. Yeah. Because I think the perception is, is that we have to give clients more information and we're in the information age to no end. I mean, yep. there is no shortage. Now, of course, some of it's crap, not good, and sometimes completely wrong. But the point is, is that Clients have more access to information than ever before, and it's the information to implementation gap that's the problem. So us giving them more and more information, we have to re-educate on a few fallacies, right? But yeah. we have to, even a couple of core things that they already know, like Scott said, like, I don't know, late night snacking every night on high caloric foods may not be getting me to my weight loss goal. Most people do know that. So how can we help them tweak that and what's holding them back from doing that? Because I already know that's an issue. And so it's just finding that, creating that bridge, because we also know in behavior science that once you start having some initial success, it's called behavioral momentum, right? It's it's that, you know, it just like the, the little snowball that, you know, comes into this big avalanche type of thing. It grows. And so we just need to help folks. We don't need an extreme transformation because those usually don't stick around but it's those small changes and they start, the motivation naturally increases and um, you start to see bigger and better effects um, pretty exponentially. Absolutely. And this is something that I've put into place for years 
and started small. It's, you know, and I've been turned on to habit change and stuff for a while. And I actually, when I was still an employee working at um, a big box gym as a trainer, that's when I kind of first, I was getting frustrated. I remember that big thick book is probably over there somewhere like the, the ISSN is it or JISSN, the journal of the, yeah, whatever the, I, I, something like that. But that was like the, the top nutrition thing. Right. And it is literally just like scientific studies after scientific studies, just on carbohydrate grams per pound, like the dumbest shit is just the dumbest shit. You know, and it was a just a huge volume of a bunch of shit that like, even if you pass that test, like you're not really qualified, like you're getting a little bit too medical yeah. on that side. Yeah. And it's really all geared on like athletic studies and stuff like that. And it's like this, I didn't end up taking it. I'm like, this is not going to help me do anything. And I got got introduced to like Dr. John Berardi stuff before he did precision nutrition. Like he he, he did something. I picked up the book when it was like through something else. I don't remember, but it started getting into habit change and all that. I'm like, okay, this is, this is what it needs to be. That was my first introduction to it. And then I'm just big on personal development too. So um, I'm always reading and learning about these things. And, you know, atomic habits is a book that I love. And so I, I have been tweaking my habits for years and getting better and cutting out the ones that don't serve me anymore. Right. And adding new ones. But I have to say, like over the past two and a half, three years, I'm kind of a superhuman version of myself at -hmm. this point. Right. But it's only from small changes. That's it. And I think that's kind of where you guys start. Right. It's we were just talking a couple minutes before we hopped on this. But I think you had mentioned that some people just like you you go it. You got it too hard. You do too much too soon. Yeah, we see this, especially young coaches. And I was definitely in this like I want to give all of my knowledge because I want to help. Like a lot of us in this field, not so much for the money, but because we love working with people and we love helping people and people come in and they're excited for change. They're like, I want to lose this weight. And they seem motivated and we're excited as coaches to have them as a client. And we want to share all this information. So we give them all these different things. And I've even seen this recently. This, uh, a woman came in two weeks ago and she's like, give me everything you have. I got a trip coming up. I was like, this doesn't work. Like I've done this long enough. I know it doesn't. She goes, still give it to me. So I was like, okay, here's five things. Do you want to get the best shape in the next two weeks for your trip? And I measured her and she came back in to meet right before the trip because she wanted to plan some of that stuff. She's like, I didn't do a single thing. It was just overwhelming. She's like, but as soon as I'm back from the trip, I will listen to your plan that you have for me. So there is a little bit of education of like giving them, you know, enough rope to hang themselves. So thanks for saying, but um, so they, they can learn that, but you know, the, the two big things that we we really um, practice is one is minimal effective dose. So we have to give them enough so that they can see some progress. But what's the least amount that you can change, which is a whole different mindset for most trainers. They'd be like, I want, a, I want a 12-week transformation. Like, I want you to be my poster child so I can put it up and advertise more. It's more like, what's the least amount I can do for you to still see progress? And the other one, and I know you're big on this one too, is like, these conversations need to be off the floor. Like if we're having these conversations about their habits and their nutrition and their lifestyle and their personality and all these different things in between their squats and their leg curl and their whatever else they're doing, like they're not going to retain anything. We're not going to really peel back very many layers to figure out what's actually holding them back. So if we can really do those two things, of having conversations off the floor, dedicated time and space to dig into what's going on and also just implementing minimal effective dose, we can have a lot of progress in the long term for people. And that, taking it, and that taking it off the floor, it's funny because, you know, when we work with coaches and, and trainers on this, some of them be like, no, 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 I have really good conversations with some of my clients. We really cover a lot while we're training on this and, and I have a good handle on their nutrition. And, but when we, when we sit there and say like, okay, well, has this changed? Has this changed for them? Has this changed? They're like, no. And I was like, their recall is not accurate because they are not poised for that. Their their motor planning and coordination and the cognitive bandwidth that's required for that is is just too much to actually be able to recall correctly what I ate over the weekend or what my habits are. And then also, I'm going to want to be agreeable because, and in fairness to clients, right, also is the fitness industry does have a habit, as many industries do, of marketing things like carbs are bad or this this perfect diet or if you eat clean or if you do this or you have this much amount of cardio 
we like to market extremes and that's been even the transformations and that's what people see. So they feel like, and I hear this from people all the time, oh, I don't have good willpower. I'm not very motivated. And because they're viewing these extremes and saying, I haven't hit that. So therefore I don't have willpower or I don't have motivation. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, um, and I hear coaches and trainers sometimes use those words and I'm like, oh, that's actually not the definition of that term. And so there's this misunderstanding that people don't want change. If they showed up at your place, if they called you to have a conversation about this, they're motivated. We just need to help help with what we're giving them because if you're button up against willpower all day long, yeah, eventually it's just going to crash and burn. So that minimal effective dose is really about figuring out changes that will fit into people's lifestyles in routines and habit stacking of things that they're already doing so that it's less about willpower and more about just those small things that become almost a natural part. And I think that's what you were talking about even on your personal life, it sounds like. Like you fit these little things in and over time, mm-hmm. it's part of your lifestyle. You're not actually having to think it, about it. And I have it automation. Like if something is automatic and I don't have to consciously think about it, then it's a habit. So And it's so powerful. It's so powerful. And for all the fitness professionals listening to this, think about it. Okay. You are a fitness professional because you have made these things your habits. Like you, and you're geeked out by it. Like you like it. You like learning about this stuff, physiology, nutrition, and all that kind of stuff. That's not everybody else. Right. But the first thing that trainers and gym owners want to do is like they want to give them everything that they do to lose the weight or get in the shape they are. They're not you. It's got, to, I mean, they have, they're just a lot different. They're not nerded out by this kind of stuff, right? And they have a different lifestyle than you. And you have to make it congruent with their lifestyle. Like you guys said, if you give like a, whatever kind of super hard transformation, like let's take 75 hard for an example. Okay. Right. There's that. All right. What about this? What about 75 easy? That's the program that's going to work for everybody in the long term. Give me 75 easy. How can you help these people change, making these small changes completely congruent with foods that they enjoy eating at times that are convenient for them, so on and so forth. Sometimes you make some larger changes, but how can you make it fit in with with, the, with what they know and love and not have it be overwhelming, overly restrictive? Because they're never, ever, ever going to stick with it. And if you look back at your journey through fitness... It didn't start by huge, huge, massive jumps forever either. You kind of got gradually into it more and more and more and more, and you're the product of doing it for several years. It's the Absolutely. same thing. We also talk about being people's fitness guide. You know, I talked earlier about all of this information that's out there. Well, there's also a lot of opinions, and you can go to the functional medicine to all these different places, but how do you integrate? And if if the fitness professionals can be that guide, and again, outsource as appropriately and stay in your scope, but if you're meeting with them separately, they're happy to come and have one person that can just kind of help sort through some of this stuff, send them here and here if you've got a good network, and they'll pay you for this time if you can simplify things and give a journey in a direction that, like you said, fits into the lifestyle and that they feel that there's progress um, and, and that behavioral momentum. And so that's what we've really seen with training and, and working with a lot of coaches in this area. Mm-hmm. So one, one other thing that uh, we get a lot of questions about this is coaches are like, I don't want to hear more about their problems. I don't want to be their therapist. I already get a lot of that on the floor. And so what's important about this, and, and this is why we're also cautious about people that are big into motivational interviewing and just doing that, because Motivational interviews, a lot of asking open-ended questions, which is good, but you also have to be very careful with that. You know, you don't want to be like, well, how's your marriage going? Or, you know, like some of these things that you don't want to get into the nuts and bolts of like some of that stuff. So that's why it's the, the way that we've put this system in place is like most of our conversations, most of these meetings that we teach for the 360 wellness are 15 minutes long. So it's it's kind of like a program design. You don't just go in there and just wing it like you would a you know a workout that you've never you know programmed on before. You like you have a set like this is what we start with. This is what we're trying to accomplish. This is what you're supposed to leave with. Like you should have a set plan of going in there so you can keep it short. Because if we're keep going minimal effective dose, this doesn't mean we need to talk for an hour about all the different things. We need to give them one or two small things to change. We need to figure out what the root cause of their unhealthy behaviors are, and we need to make sure it's clear that what they know when they leave 
on what to do. I didn't realize how congruent your stuff was with what we preach as well. That's fantastic. The, the way we kind of handle our, you know, our high ticket programs, which is our mentorship is what we call it, but it's basically like exactly what you guys are describing. Okay. And we have a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, first where we onboard them to learn about, we give them homework, but we learn about their daily lives, their habits and, you know, yeah. where they tend to fall short, what they like, all these different things to learn about them and their schedule and, and what are the obstacles there, right? To give them a framework to start. And then, and then really it's just a weekly check-in, okay? Typically over Zoom, a lot of gym owners, it's easier to do it over Zoom. So it's not a separate appointment. It's not even after a session, right? When they're tired or before, when they're just anxious to get. So they're just like, all right, let's get to it, right? You give it the due respect it needs, right? To be separate, impactful for a reason. And we teach those to be about 15 minutes long. Yes. Uh, that's amazing, actually. And it is literally that simple where, yeah, you just, you you analyze that data, right? And then how they did. And then like we have them celebrate wins as well because it's important to recognize that things are doing well. I'm sure you guys do that. Um, and then, yeah, it's identifying, you know, where they're struggling, get some clarity on it. And just getting really clear on an action item and a way that they can make that easier for next week. Um, and then if, but if they're nailing these and they're sticking these, cool, then you can add on the next kind of thing and have a stack and improve over time. I didn't realize how congruent it was. That's that's pretty amazing. Yeah, there, there. We have several session templates: the first session, the second session, the third session, because mm -hmm. we want to build on these things. And we want to use behavior science and what the research has shown us and what we've seen in practice for, you know, a, a long time. And so that, again, to Scott's point is coaches and trainers can feel confident in understanding like program design, how this works and that there's a process. And if things do come up that are outside of our, you know, that scope, like talking about somebody's marriage or things like that, that are really challenging, then yeah, here's some therapists or other people if you need a resource. But here's the part that we're going to talk about today yeah. in this scope. And the 15 minutes is also really about, um, and we have a, a small assessment that we have um, for clients to understand um, what their communication style is, because some people are why people, some people are just give me the facts. Other people are, um, it can't be about me. It has to be how I can help other people. So you can't say, oh, have some me time because that doesn't resonate. So we created a quick assessment so that uh, a coach or trainer can really quickly know that about the client before the first Excellent. thing. But my point in that is that 15 minutes should be geared to their communication style. And it's efficient because that is all the brain is going to, to you know, um, acquire. I mean, think about people when they go to a medical doctor. Very few times you get to meet with a medical doctor for more than 15 minutes. And people still can't remember the name of the prescription when they walked out or when am I supposed to do this, whatever. There's just, there's just a lot. And so there's this fallacy that the more we talk, the more we're helping and it's about what you say and how you say it that helps people then retain it and then have those small steps for big wins. It's great. I love how I love how you kind of like you're going to segment to kind of learn how this person communicates and they're kind of in that bucket and you kind of know how to treat different people because, yeah, people are vastly different. I yep. tend to be like, give me a, the facts kind of kind of guy. Right? Exactly. And if you overwise somebody like that or give them too much detail, right, you start tuning out. I get <laughs> irritated. I get very yep. impatient. <laughs> Which I'm sure like there's, there's, okay. Yeah. You, you have, there's the asshole bucket that you're in Scott. Right. But, <laughs> but like, I do, like I get really, I, I start, if the people go on about that, I get, I start getting irritated antsy. Yeah. Um, they talk too slow, things like that. I'm sure just a little yep. frustrating. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's great. That's great because those individual things, yeah, everybody's different. And it's just, we know this stuff, but we don't adapt our strategies enough quite often because we don't know how. So I love that you have a framework on that. Another thing, and you you alluded to this earlier, that I think it's important to, to note is if someone comes in and they're asking for weight loss or they're asking for health or asking for body comp, and all we do is give them a workout, they're going to associate that like, well, all I need to do to improve all these things is just work out. And if we don't give the time and space to give attention and the focus to addressing all the other areas where it's getting into sleep and nutrition, supplementation, movement outside the gym, stress management, all these different things, then people can just think it's just the workout. 
And I think we are uh, in this world, this stage in our life right now, where we have a lot of people that are coming for exercise for these things. And I think it's partly because that's what's being marketed. But the, the more as, as a collective and the fitness industry can start educating the consumer on it is much more than the workout. Like I love workouts. I think they're very beneficial for, for strength and longevity and just overall just feeling good. But it's such a sliver of the all the different pieces when it comes to health and longevity and weight loss and body comp and just feeling good. And so if we can start giving some more emphasis on these other facets by taking off the floor, by having conversation on this, we are going to have a much healthier community. And that's really what we need. Hey, just a quick reminder to everybody, if you are ready to start making an extra $10,000 more this month, every month, by making more money with less clients with transformational programs and create a consistent flow of high quality leads, you can learn more about what it's like to work with me and my team at PT Legends and how ridiculously affordable it is at coachscottcarpenter.com. It is such a no-brainer that it more than pays for itself when we teach you how to enroll two just two case study clients. Really, that's it. So go to coachscottcarpenter.com and learn more about it. It's what I've been on my soapbox for years. And all the, the fitness professionals that we work with, I say, stop selling sessions. Stop selling sessions. You need to start selling solutions. Nobody wants to come in and work out. Very few, right? Yep. Nobody wants that. They're not coming here to work. Most of them hate working out. They're coming here for something else. They're coming here to solve a problem. That's what you need to be selling. Sell that solution. That's that's how we teach people how to sell solution-based transformational programs where the yeah. goal, it's not, yeah, the goal isn't some radical transformation on a really restrictive guy, diet. The goal is to, to teach them these foundational habits that they can take for a lifetime, right? And really change who they are, not just the end result of, of like the weight. Like that's just just kind of the symptom of it, right? What they really yeah. want to do is they want to have more control. They want to feel better about themselves, right? Yeah. They don't want to wake up and feel like it's whack-a-mole every day and they're spiraling out of control. Yeah, and if we're only offering the workout, it's really hard to be telling them that there's it's all of these factors and it's not just that, but then if our offerings are only a workout. Right. That doesn't read right, right? So it, it gets kind of confusing for the consumer, the client to be like, well, everybody's saying this or I'm reading all of this stuff, but when I go, this is all that they're offering. And so I think it's a really yep. good point. And a lot of people that just do the nutrition on top of it, then a lot of it is just what we both don't like. It's just information dumping. Let me teach you all about protein and carbs and fat. like they don't need to know. They don't need to know about how they don't need to know how things break down and this and that. Like, don't ever mention the Krebs cycle. I'll, you know, I mean, just stop. They don't give a shit. They're tuning you out. They don't care. You're a nerd. You like it. These people aren't. And it's just really getting down to that action. So, yeah, it's it's so important. And there's so few people doing this. It blows my mind. It really blows my mind how few fitness professionals are out there teaching this and doing this and it's shocking and kind of surprising um i've been about it for years even before it became a thing but you're right scott i think the trend is it's leaning this way but i think people are very slow to adapt to this yeah and i think one of the reasons why there's slow adaptation is i still have a lot of clients come in and asking for a meal plan like that's what they think that they want mm -hmm. so you as a coach you have to be confident and knowledgeable enough to be like, it's not going to be the best fit for you. You might be able to do this for a short term, but it's not going to solve anything. And so you have to kind of stand up to them on that and not give them exactly what they're asking for. But what they need. But what they need. Exactly. Yep. And that's, that's a big part of what we teach on the sales side of this. And Dr. J, this, this is going to be easy for you to know, but like we call it having a doctor frame. Right. Coming in with the doctor, like I can't walk, you know, you, you have a PhD and you're a behaviorist or, you know, all that kind of stuff. And like, let's say you, it was on the, um, what's the other, the MD side, right. And you're treating for whatever. Yeah. I couldn't walk into your office, you know, tell you what I have going on, what I need. Um, and by the way, how much is it? And like, do you have 9am, 9am open tomorrow? Right. 
Yeah. It exactly. doesn't work like that. Like I got to go through your intake thing. I got to fill shit out. I got to tell you all about me. I can maybe, I might want to go in there and tell you what I my problems are and what I think needs to be done. But you're going to say, well, hold on a minute, right? You're going to say, well, how long has it been like this? What led up to that? Does yeah. Do you experience this in this way, that way? You're going to diagnose me and then you're going to prescribe the solution to me. 100%. Right? And that's I ran my clinic. So same thing. People walk in and they're like, I know what I need and da, da, da. And I was like, I'm hearing your words. Now let's actually figure out what you need and what's going on. So yes. You can't let them come in and just tell you what they need. And you're just grateful to get the business. You need to learn. Am I here? Right. I'm here to help you and I have expertise. So let me help you. Exactly. So you have a strong doctor frame. You know, you're the expert, you know, you're the authority, right? We need to hold that line even though we're just personal trainers or CrossFit coaches or gym owners or whatever you, you are, right? We need to learn to develop that. We need to have that confidence to have, hold that doctor frame and be in control of the conversation so that we can direct them to the help that they actually need. Because they're yeah. going to come in and ask for a Band-Aid for a bleeding neck problem. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And like, no, your head's going to fall off. If you just want to follow this meal plan and work out really hard to get in shape for your cruise, your, your head's going to fall off. Like, you know, we'll see where you are in three months, you know, three or six months from now. Yeah. It's a collaboration, but they're coming to you. So there's a, a level of expertise expected and yeah. And hopefully mm-hmm. you're willing to give that even if it's not necessarily um, understood right away. So, yeah, yeah, it's, it's tough because a lot of times, you know, we all need more clients, right? So we're scared to take that approach, but this is where like, you know, let's say they, they do uh, your certification at a healthy behavior Institute. Now you, you know, way more about it. You have more confidence and let's say, you know, you, you come in and learn how to sell this thing. Like you're going to have this confidence to be able to speak like that and do the right thing. I understand if this is brand new to you, you're like, oh man, I don't know if I could do that. And listen, like you just got to learn how to do it. The next step is for you to learn how to do it and then do it. Because otherwise, do you really just, does your impact on the world, do you really just want to be a rep counter forever? Or did you get into this because you actually want to change people's lives? And I think we all found out the hard way, changing people's lives is freaking tough. You know, you're going to really have to put some work into learning how to do it. So just do it. Yeah. So I love it. I love it. Like we're spot on in every single thing. I wish I knew about how long have you, how long has uh, this been around? So really about 10 years ago, we started playing around with this and just kind of putting it together and slowly mm-hmm. started implementing it with my clients and then started implementing it at my facility. And then the last couple of years, we went fully online as a course. COVID really kind of helped push us that because we were doing some in persons pre-COVID because we were going to different gyms and learning, teaching most of this in a one day. Mm-hmm. Um, COVID really pushed us to um, get everything online. So everything's fully online. We still do some in persons, um, but yeah, everything can be done online. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I wish I would have known about this 10 years ago. I probably would have made a lot of shortcuts uh, for me instead of figuring things out the hard way. And, and uh, yeah, this is something that, that a lot of our PT legends are interested in too, right? Cause we, we teach some basics on this, but what really helps is when they do a, a good intensive on this kind of stuff, right? Which you guys have really specialized in and done that. And it just, it helps give you more confidence at the sales side, not just the fulfill, fulfillment side as well. Yeah, we work a lot also on in the course, there is parts on sales, just as far as language, how are you communicating to this clients? Because as Scott pointed out, clients come in and ask for one thing, how do you frame this to help them understand how this is different, Mm -hmm. still what they need and things like that? Because yeah, it's nice to learn things, but it can be a little intimidating, right? To say like, okay, I've learned this, but now can I do this? So we've really tried in in part because we, we worked on it for so long with like, Scott's clients, the gym and other gyms. And so we've kind of worked through many of those um, sort of what if or how that. And so, so tried to make it as easy and plug and play as possible. Yeah, that's great. And I, I love that. It's not just a bunch of theory too, yeah. right? Cause it's easy for a doctor just to like, Hey, here you go. But without that knowledge of like 
you two coming together with you, Scott, you've got the applied knowledge and you've done it in your career for a very long time. You're also a business owner and you guys combining forces. That's what really creates something um, that works well. That's why I like the best software in our industry is created by somebody actively in the industry. Um, otherwise, it's just, you know, it's like points of a crown and like none of them talk to each other. So that's that's um, yeah, that's that's great. I love it. Um, so you've been doing it for 10 years. You go um, uh, online right now so people can get certified online. I'm sure there's a bunch of coursework to work through. Um, how long does it take to get through that? So it's a self-paced course. Like we'll okay. see some people get it done in the 30 days, but some people that are you know working professionals and have kids and stuff like that, they might take you know 90, 120 days. So it's it's really at your your own pace to do that. But um, it's one of those things that we also set up some one-on-one -on -one calls for everybody that goes through the course throughout it, because we want people to implement this. It's not just to learn a few more nuggets to have in you know, the ball cap. It's more of like, we want, we want all the coaches to be able to implement this because this is ultimately what's going to change people's lives. And we did create a fast track course also that can be taken if you just want to get a jump start and then work through all of the other parts. Um, at your own pace, you know, for those that are just like ready to get started and implement this in their um, training practice. Like you, Scott, you would be a good fast track person <laughs> because you want to get down there and you want to start doing it. And then you can learn more of the, um, the, the why stuff as you yep. go along. Yep, yep, absolutely. So I, I love that because it's like action is so important. It's so important. And it goes the other way too. When you're working with clients, like just stick to the action stuff. You don't need to, you don't, nothing needs to be perfect. Just get, yep. get down to what you need. And I'm a big fan of like, yeah, what, what are the 20% of inputs that can get me 80, 90% of the way there. Right. Exactly. And yeah. then over time, and you need the experience to fully learn too. So 100%. if you got a fast track and you can start working with people immediately on it, yes. now you have experience and you're like, hey, I wonder about that. Or I'm stumbling here. What can I do there? And that's where all the supplemental and the continued learning and, and really diving into the details. Cause it's the strangest thing why people go, you know, in business, they'll go bachelor's and a master's and in business or something like you can't get a master's in business without having had a job. You know, yeah. it doesn't make any sense. You can, yeah. you can definitely overlearn like the act, the application is so important to fully grasp everything. You don't even know how to ask the right questions. Yeah. They're not even popping in your head. <laughs> yeah. You don't know what you don't know yeah. at all. Right. So I think that's great. I, I I love that you guys have put this stuff together. It's 100% needed. This is stuff I've been preaching forever um, that needs to change. This is why I left my employer and started my own place because I'm like, nobody gives a shit. I, I brought this attention and they're like, who's that thing by? And they didn't recognize the name. It's not one of the you know certified providers. So they never even gave any thought. But I'm like, I'm selling better way. I'm you want to talk your language. I'm selling way more because of this knowledge and I'm having a greater impact. And I sucked back then compared to me now, <laughs> but so much better. And like, that's what we're here for. That's like, yeah. like the, it's, it's, it's like, like in the name, you know what I mean? Like we're here to make this change. Like it, it just floors me um, that more people don't do this kind of stuff. It's going to be one of the best certifications you've ever taken in your life. I guarantee you. So do that before doing advanced kettlebell level two or whatever it is like Pick mobility. Yeah. Like even with some of those, I'm like, I, I kind of got that from the YouTube video I watched. Like it's not, it's not rocket science here. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, advanced mace wielding level three, you know, it's like, yeah, I, I saw him do that. I just did it myself. It was, it's not very challenging. Like, got it. This is the stuff that matters. Business, helping people and helping people change their lives. Well, are these are these meta skill sets that will help you be phenomenally more successful than anything else. Yeah. So anyways, guys, uh, Dr. J, Scott, thank you so much for coming on on the show. I love what you guys do. Um, what is a way that our listeners can find you guys or learn more about your certification? Yeah, just going to healthybehaviorinstitute.com. Yeah, you can learn a lot about our certification there. Uh, we also do a podcast, um, becoming the ultimate fitness coach with the jock and the doc. Um, nice. that's the, <laughs> Dr. J is a doc. If you're unclear with that one. Um, so that's our kind of our free resource and 
we even on our site, we have a place where you could schedule a call because we want to make sure this is a good fit for people. So we can talk about like where you're at in your fitness journey and like, where is, what's the best way to implement this and answer any questions we have. Beautiful. I love it. Thank you guys so much for coming on the show. Um, you're doing great work for the world. This is uh, we're kind of aligned exactly in that, which is perfect. Uh, it's super important what we're doing. Um, so thank you both and everybody for listening. Uh, go check them out. We'll leave their contact information in the show notes. Thank you for uh, stepping into this episode. We will see you next week. Thanks for listening, everyone. If you are ready to start making an extra $10,000 a month or more this month by making more money with less clients and create a consistent flow of high quality leads, you can learn about what it's like to work with me and how ridiculously affordable it is at coachscottcarpenter.com. And if you got any value out of this episode, please pay it forward and leave a review for this show. It helps other gym owners find the answers to the huge problems that we all share. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode.